for easing restrictions is still a work in progress, still a little bit hazy. It's dependent on what people do today. But from where you're sitting with the data you have, can you say today that baseball is possible in July, school will be back in session in September, and it's possible that elections will happen as normal in November? Yeah, I don't know, I don't know as normal uh, and none of the above as normal. I think that would be unrealistic to assert. Uh, you have to radically change the floor plans in the schools, in businesses, private, uh, public institutions, large and small. Uh, we're going to have new protocols and procedures, temperature checks, people wearing face coverings across the spectrum. But the idea of tens of thousands of fans coming together across their differences, high-fiving one another, hugging each other uh, after a base hit uh, or a strikeout uh, is not something I'm anticipating anytime soon. It sounds like what you're saying is life as we knew it is gone until such a time when there's a vaccine or herd immunity. You got it. I mean, it's not that complicated or incredibly successful and viably uh, uh, distributed treatments. I don't anticipate uh, that normalcy that many of us wish for happening anytime soon, uh, but we will begin to toggle back to put a little dimmer switch up and begin to change the way we currently are conducting ourselves from a full lockdown stay-at-home order to one that is more prescriptive, targeted, and strategized. Here you are preparing people for profound changes. I don't hear the same message from Washington, D.C., from President Trump. Do you think he has a responsibility at this point to start preparing America for the very same changes you've described? I think we all have a responsibility to use the information that we have, the data we have, uh, and, and, and process it in a way that's open and honest with the American people. Uh, look, I don't think there's anything wrong with being optimistic and hopeful. I, I'm optimistic. I'm hopeful. This is not the new normalcy in perpetuity. We're going to come back. We just need to temper the enthusiasm on when and how. And once we get herd immunity and once we get a vaccine, then we could come back and flourish and thrive. Boy, but, you know, herd immunity or a vaccine, that could be many months or more than a year off. So when it comes to being open and honest with the American people, the governor of California seems to be trying to do so. Uh, like many other governors, he also said uh, he would like to see more federal support in testing, not with the facilities. They have enough facilities. What they lack, Gail, is the supplies, swabs and the like. You know, you know, Tony, what strikes me about the interview that you just did with Governor Newsom, he is certainly consistent. Last time he was on our air, he said opening too soon would be like jumping out of a plane with a parachute and cutting the cord before you land. A lot of people thought that was a really great analogy. And the latest poll shows that people hold on to what Dr. Tony Fauci says about when this should reopen. And he has said all along, the virus determines the timeline, not anybody else. And uh, the sergeant from the National Guard came in and my friend asked him, you know, what's going on with all the military, you know, the National Guard. And he told him that, uh, you know, they'd all been called back, which, you know, we know they would called the military back up and activated the National Guards and. Trump calling out, what, over a million infantry? But, uh, so my friend asked him, well, you know, what's, what are you guys going to be doing? And the sergeant told him that they're going to be bottlenecking starting in the big cities, bottlenecking down the traffic in order to do testing. And my friend was like, well, you know, what if the person doesn't want to be tested and, you know, they don't agree to it? And the sergeant informed him that it was not an option to not be tested. And my friend's like, well, what if they refuse, you know? And the sergeant informed him that whatever force is necessary will be used in order to conduct the test. And here's what's happening down in South America, Peru, Panama to limit movement by gender in bid to slow down the coronavirus.
and the country's police and security forces are enforcing a new regulation. Men can leave their homes on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays with an ID, while women can only do so on Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays, and Sunday, no go nowhere. You stay at home. This can be implemented in the United States and all across the world as well. They do them testing around the world, but just one more of the taking away of our liberties, our freedoms, and putting us all under permanent lockdown. So first we had the uh, coronavirus outbreak and the flattening of the curve. Then we had the lockdown, stay at home, shelter in place terminology. Uh, and then we had the social distancing um, uh, meme come out. And now we have the new one they're introducing to us, contact tracers. What is a contact tracer? Well, <laughs> it's beyond the pale. And again, uh, what I want to show you is Governor, Governor Newsom, the Jesuit, uh, announcing that 10,000 contact tracers are going to be needed uh, in the pandemic. Testing and contact tracing will be expanded. I'm committed to sending the state 100,000 testing swabs next week and a quarter million swabs the following week. So this is going to be happening very rapidly, and it's going to be happening everywhere. Um, and there's going to be choke points where you're going to have to get mandatory swab testing, even though We've proven and shown over and over where the test kits show up to 80% false positives. And even though we know that the death certificates now are being, no matter what you're dying from, are being listed as COVID and padding the numbers as well. So check this out. And this is being picked up by all the corporate news sources, so you know they're, they're playing the meme here. Google and Apple announced today that they'll use Bluetooth to track COVID-19 cases, so you'll be tracked by your phones. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but every time I sign into my Gmail account now, if I use a different computer, I've got to have my phone connected to get the key to uh, the code to unlock uh, the Gmail uh, for my own protection, for my own security. All right, during infectious disease outbreak, the best tools public health experts have is old school detectric work, finding each sick person and then figuring out who they re recently interacted with. The technique is called contact tracing. So this is where it gets uh, rubber meets the road here, folks. Contact tracing is based on an obvious idea. People in close contact with someone who has COVID-19 are, are at risk of getting sick. So what are we doing? We're all at home. So they're saying all your family members at home are at risk if they find someone that has COVID-19. When a person gets sick, they are then interviewed by the public health officials. The pe public health officials are the new gods, folks. They get to make all the decisions and ask who has been exposed to them. Then they take that list and fan out to ask those people who either, either to pay close attention to how they're feeling or to quarantine, forcibly remove you from your home. Read that. If they Get this. If a person who was exposed is infected, again, 80% false positives on the testing, their recent contacts will be tracked down like dogs and hunted. Remember they used the term in Rhode Island, we will hunt you down when people were fleeing New York City during the beginning of the lockdown? The process continues until everyone who has been exposed is, get this, out of circulation. Read that again. The process continues until everyone who has been exposed is out of circulation, and that stops the virus transmissions. The virus for then have nowhere to go. And then they got their man boy symbol down here. I mean, this is what where we're heading with it all. And this is not just happening in California, in Texas in different city states or in different counties it's happening all around the world contact tracing is the new meme they're going to be implementing roadblocks are going to be set up choke points are going to be set up mandatory schwabbing is going to be set up tracking you by your apps are going to be implemented That in response to the spread of this virus, authorities may have to enter people's homes and remove family members, presumably by force. In most parts of the world, due to lockdown, most of the transmission that's actually happening in many countries now is happening in the household, at family level. In some senses, transmission has been taken off the streets and pushed back into family units. Now we need to go and look in families to find those people who may be sick and remove them and isolate them in a, in a safe 